The ski trip was made on April 27th, 1958. We are up at 13,000 on Pikes Peak, skiing across a, a, a slope to get over to the main, the highest point of Sentinel Ski Center. This is a future potential that would be developed at some time after the initial private land development. We are hiking up to the highest point, which is 12,888 feet, which with uh, the owner in red and Willie Shuffler in the blue hat and a skier from Colorado College. Uh, Willie Shuffler was Olympic ski coach at one time and he has given us a feasibility report uh, to go along with others. We, it's a little climb up, took us about 20 minutes to get to the high point possibly, and then it's all downhill for seven miles. We have a little wind up here which forms the normal cornices that you find on high ridges. But you will notice that as soon as we start skiing down, there is no real wind. Um, normal maintenance of snow would be done, such as snow fencing, which we discussed, uh, along the edge of the rocks to make a wider slope. But the the panoramic view here is just phenomenal. It's 360 degrees. We were looking north and now we're looking, starting to look east across the summit where eventually there would be a restaurant. And here is looking to the, the road going up Pikes Peak and the actual summit is right in front of us. Uh, this is looking south of the city's watershed area and looking at the Sandy de Cristos about 100 miles away, uh, looking toward Cripple Creek. We start down a, a slope that uh, skiers and kids, young people can get down very easily. Uh, snow cats and with a little fencing, we would have, this would all be skiable. Uh, about two football fields in width. The, after about 300, 250 feet of descending, there's no more rocks and we're, it's simply snow. Uh, this sort of a view is, is really not had in a lot of Colorado ski areas. And you can see the two other skiers are clear at the bottom and now Mr. Carter, the owner of the property, is starting to go down. Um, but you see, anybody can get off of this top point because then from down there, we soon will show looking into the bowl proper, which can be skied more or less going straight down or it can be skied uh, making turns and big traverses uh, a mile or so across. The Olympic ski coach Willie Schaeffler and the owner Harvey Carter and a student from CC skier and we're considering how we would use a little above timberline snow fencing to pile up snow a little higher. We're looking down into the main big bowl about a mile and a half wide few rocks at the start would be moved and so forth and made smooth to get in. Uh, it pretty much, even though it's great skiing for expert skiers, it's, it's good for intermediates because they can traverse for a quarter of a mile if they want or come back or take their kids across and down. And then when we get to the trees, we are down at about 11,700 feet. 
Uh, here, the owner's skiing on about 46 inches of snow in depth. Beautiful. And as you see, there's no uh, wind uh, action uh, in around the trees or anything uh, more than is normal. And there's undulation in the trees quite a bit. Uh, can be at least 10 trails through this part of the, the lower part of the bowl. Just some of the trees would be left and, and uh, some would be taken out so that you would, there would still be some trees, but some would be taken out. Here you can barely see stumps that are three, four feet high from cutting of a hundred years ago when the mining was done in Cripple Creek. We're now near the bottom of the bowl-shaped upper area where there's an old cabin, which was a miner's cabin at one time in the early 1910 period. This is heading on down the, uh, across the slope and on down a ways to the top of the private land. Initial phase development. Looking across a slope, looking up into the main bowl and the main run coming out of this entire area is also where the stream starts that flows on down. And we were looking down there where there will be a upper two acre lake built. And this view is also uh, from a restaurant site on the private land. When we can ski, when this is built, uh, enlarged in the future, we would have 150 more vertical feet than Breckenridge, so that the potential is quite big. Here we're down on intermediate slopes and uh, just pointing out some of them where different slopes come together and how they would be cut and so forth. All of these slopes, of course, would have snowmaking for early in the year when it is sometimes necessary, as all Colorado ski slopes are now uh, putting in artificial uh, snow, which is for your early season and Christmas skiing, basically. This is a big open meadow on the private land that would have a one-acre lake on it and a football field for recreation and uh, tennis courts up above where it's level behind the person in the red jacket here, the owner, uh, looking at the entire view that the skiers would have, as well as the condos that would be built on the private land. This is looking even uh, south-facing slopes that even still has snow. That is the advantage of being at 10,000 feet in the Colorado Rockies. You can keep your snow so much longer. This is perfect intermediate uh, beginner terrain that we're looking at to get down to the lower chairlift, which we are now looking at the site of the lower chairlift and the main restaurant would be right on the side of this picture. And now we are heading on down Putney Gulch, uh, which is three miles down to the highway going to Cripple Creek. We've now got down to the highway at 9,000 feet and as you can see the snow has left. 